an mRNA vaccine uh, is a new technique. It's been developed seriously over the last 10 years. This is not something that was thrown together at the last minute. They've been working on mRNA vaccines for the last 10 years. Now, this presented one of the first opportunities to really new, use it with a new and novel uh, viral vector, but it has been a technology that's been being researched and is being well understood for at least the past 10 years. The truth is a, an mRNA vaccine does not change our DNA. Now, there are nucleic acid There are nucleic acid uh, vaccines, one of which is a DNA vaccine that does go into the nucleus of your cells. Uh, but an mRNA is simply that piece of messenger RNA that tells your body to produce proteins that are exported to the surface of your own cells. An mRNA vaccine only persists in your body for about 36 to 48 hours and then it's gone. It never goes into the nucleus of your cells. It never goes uh, into the DNA itself. It simply helps you produce uh, the proteins that we want your body to see and recognize as foreign proteins so it can generate an immune response against those proteins. The answer to that is no. It does not contain any fetal or embryonic tissue. Uh, it's not done with aborted fetuses or anything that would violate our ethical or religious uh, directives. It, it's simply a uh, new technology that is uh, very well adapted to give us immunity without running the risk of, of overt infection. It was developed and approved so quickly because the companies that had already been looking at this technology were up and ready to go when the new challenge came. Uh, if you watched 60 Minutes last night, you saw the, uh, the developers of the vaccine and they talked about how they brought it to market so quickly and how this represented the first real challenge for them to, to be able to deploy this new technology that they've been working on for at least the past decade. Everyone needs two doses of the vaccine simply because that's the way they were tested. That's how we produce a 95% immune response. We know that the first dose probably over time gives us mm, some, somewhere in the range of 50% uh, protection, but that second dose is what really brings it up to the 94, 95% range of protection. You, you do need those two doses. And the doses, by the way, from different manufacturers are not interchangeable. If you get the Pfizer vaccine first, you've got to get the Pfizer vaccine uh, three weeks later. If you get the Moderna vaccine, you have to get the second dose of Moderna vaccine four weeks later. Almost everybody should get the COVID uh, vaccine. The exceptions are the following. If you are pregnant, it's never been studied in pregnant women, so we don't know uh, what the effects of, of, of it on pregnancy are. We do know that uh, fetal tissues have been cultured positive for the virus if the mother gets COVID-19 during her pregnancy, but we just don't know what the effect of the uh, vaccine is during pregnancy. Now, concerning uh, breastfeeding, uh, there's probably minimal to no risk of any transmission to the, to the fetus. Uh, there's probably no risk to the fetus even if the mRNA, mRNA is transferred to the fetus during breastfeeding. It's just not that type of a live virus or an attenuated virus that could cross over into the breast milk. If you've had severe allergic reactions to other vaccines, uh, you need to be monitored for a longer period of time than the, than the people that have never had an allergic reaction before. And the allergic reactions are not zero, but they're close to it. Uh, we've had very, very few uh, true allergic reactions during the uh, massive immunization program that we've already undertaken here at Covenant.
If you currently have COVID, you probably need to wait until all of your symptoms are resolved. Now, there was originally a question, do I need to wait 90 days? The answer to that is not according to the CDC. They think that once your symptoms resolve, because the vaccine probably gives you a different type of immunity than the actual COVID-19 infection does, they are recommending that you go ahead and get the vaccine as soon as your symptoms resolve. If you have been exposed to someone with COVID-19, they are recommended currently that you wait until the quarantine period is up, which is currently 10 days rather than the original 14 days. And if you're not manifesting any signs of COVID-19 by that point in time, they are recommending that you go ahead and get the vaccine. Antibiotics have little to nothing to do with, with vaccinations. It has little to nothing to do with uh, resolution of viral infections. So antibiotics per se don't, don't make any difference whatsoever with the administration of this vaccine. At this point in time, there is no mandatory vaccination program. We are strongly, strongly encouraging our caregivers to get the vaccine because we know that it will keep them safe. We know that it is 95% effective. And even for those 5% of uh, people that uh, may not get complete immunity, we think that it will lessen the severity of their disease. The vaccine has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with infertility. There is no evidence whatsoever that these types of vaccines create, cause, or have any, any relationship whatsoever with infertility. No. The usual side effects that we see are, of course, pain at the injection site, some arm soreness for a day or two afterwards. Uh, some People will get a low-grade fever for 24 to 36 hours, uh, and some will get a little achiness, especially after the second dose of the vaccine. All of those are incredibly manageable, and uh, they're very worth it. Uh, those things are a minor price to pay for protection against this deadly, deadly virus. That's really not true. In fact, for uh, patients that get a little low-grade fever, uh, a dose of Tylenol or two is a great way to make that go away. Uh, the aches and, and soreness from the uh, uh, injections, from the uh, myalgias or muscle aches that you might get with the vaccine are very treatable with the anti-inflammatory things like Motrin or Advil. And there's no, there's no interference whatsoever with the actual body's production of antibodies just because you've uh, taken a pain medication. We have uh, all of the things that you would normally treat anaphylaxis with. We have EpiPens, Benadryl, uh, the Tylenol I've already mentioned. Uh, all of those things are available at the uh, injection center and they're available for anybody that might have a minor reaction. Uh, and we again have not seen any major reactions that have required anything other than observational treatment and symptomatic treatment. They need to report that. And one of the things that we are doing is we are using a, a piece of software that people put on their phones called vSafe, and it gives them the opportunity to actually report any adverse reactions. In fact, what it will do is it will send you a message every day for the, for the several days after you've received your vaccine and let you report any side effects, any symptoms that you might be having that are related to the vaccine. It's an incredible advance in getting people to to report any uh, symptoms that they might have following administration. The answer is no vaccine is 100% effective. It just, that doesn't exist. But we know that 95% of people uh, that get this vaccine don't seem to manifest any clinical signs of COVID-19, even if they get exposed at a later date. So we know that this is incredibly effective. Uh, and even if you do get a case of COVID-19 later on, uh, it probably will be a much milder case, similar to 
uh, flu cases that have occurred after influenza vaccines. No, actually the, the state and federal government are sponsoring this. Uh, they are part of the governmental programs and there's no charge for getting the vaccine whatsoever. That's a great question. Uh, what we're trying to do with a vaccine is produce what we call herd immunity. Now herd immunity, when you read up on herd immunity, it varies depending on the contagious nature of the viral vector that we're trying to prevent. Uh, some that have a low transmission rate, uh, you only have to have 50% of the uh, population immunized. Those with very, very high, you need to be up in the 90% range with herd immunity to actually prevent uh, contagious outbreaks. We're not really sure exactly. We're thinking in the 70 to 80% range, probably for herd immunity for COVID-19, but again, only time will tell. The answer to that is it can be done, but it's not advisable. And the reason that it's not advisable is the number of vaccine doses that we initially received right here before the holidays will dictate how many more vaccines we will get after the holidays. And if we don't utilize these to our fullest extent, we may not have available vaccine after the holiday when people decide to go ahead and get it. And again, I would stress that the, the side effects are so mild that there's really no reason to wait until after the holidays. The sooner we get this uh, in folks, the sooner we can start seeing a reduction in the total number of cases we're having to treat. The benefits to getting it sooner is the sooner we get this into folks, the sooner we can uh, start to see a reduction in the total number of cases that we're having to see and treat. Interestingly enough, the, this vaccine produces an immunity against what's called a spike protein, and that spike protein probably doesn't vary a great deal from, uh, from uh, uh, viral strain to viral strain. So we think that it will have fairly broad uh, immune uh, characteristics so that w our bodies will produce antibodies that will, will work against multiple strains of the virus. And again, this virus has not shown a propensity to dramatically change its, uh, its structure very often. It is currently recommended that we get them about two weeks apart. We do not want to put one vaccine on top of another. Uh, simply because we don't want to run the risk of compounding the potential side effects if there are any allergic reactions. And we certainly want to be able to identify which, which uh, vaccine may or may not have caused uh, a reaction uh, once we get it. So two weeks apart is the preferred method. I got my vaccine. I had no problems whatsoever. Uh, anytime somebody uh, puts a needle in your arm, you're going to get a little soreness. That's to be expected. But at this point in time, I've had zero reaction other than just that minor injection site soreness. There's two real answers to that. There are people that are chronically immunosuppressed, those with uh, HIV, people that are on chronic steroids, or have problems that have reduced their immunity overall. Those patients are at more risk from, from the virus, from the actual infection, than they are from the vaccine. The vaccine may not be as effective in them, but it is recommended at this time that they go ahead and receive the vaccine uh, because nothing is likely to change with them. Now, I've had several questions about from caregivers that periodically take uh, some of the medications to reduce the inflammatory response for uh, rheumatoid arthritis, for inflammatory bowel disease, those kinds of things. Now that is a temporary immunosuppression. And my feeling is that for those with a temporary immunosuppression caused by a dose of medications to reduce their own inflammatory response, they probably want to wait at least 
90 days after that to get the vaccine so that they get the full benefit of the vaccine itself. You don't want the, the rheumatoid arthritis treatments, the inflammatory bowel disease treatments to interfere with your body's response to the actual uh, COVID-19 vaccine. The recommendation from CDC at this point in time is if you received a recombinant, uh, I'm sorry, recuperating plasma, if you received uh, Regeneron or the monoclonal antibodies, Bandolinivimab, to uh, blunt the response of an exposure or infection, you should not probably receive uh, the antibody, uh, the, I'm sorry, the vaccine for at least 90 days. You want to get all of those antibodies that were artificially in introduced into your body out of your system so that you have a clean slate to work on and your body really will make antibodies against it. You don't want to tie up the vaccine with those antibodies and it not be effective.